This is exactly right. Welcome to my favorite murder, the mini sode. Oh, isn't that cute? Hi. It's just a little, it's just a little um tiny email reading uh, service provided to you free. <laughs> right. Because you send them and we read them because you guys participate and we appreciate it. Do you want to go first? Sure. All right. This is called Dirty Jobs and Stingy Mobs. Hello, extended spooky family. A while back, I was listening to a hometown that included a story about a mob boss in Tucson, Arizona. My ears perked up and I texted my mom immediately. I asked, am I remembering correctly that your dad painted a mobster's house when he was younger? (laughs) To which she replied, he did. They provided him with a bodyguard all day and paid him in cash and wine. Some weeks later, they called him back to chip bullets out of a wall, repair (laughs) and repaint it for them. (laughs) Which, by the way, I want to mention that uh, do you paint houses in mob speak is uh, is basically saying, Will you assassinate someone for us? There's a book called I Heard You Paint Houses about this guy's involvement in the mob. Hmm. And so maybe you got to look into your grandpa a little more. Wow. Georgia's Mafia Fun Facts. <laughs> I've been <laughs> watching <laughs> Sopranos. It's a whole new area. Okay. That's right. Um, blah, 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 blah. My grandfather and great uncle both painted people's homes and businesses for years, interiors and exteriors outside in the Arizona sun. This was like the 50s. So it resulted in a lot of stories and a lot of skin cancer. And then it <laughs> said, wear sunscreen, everyone. My mom then shared with me that the mobster family my great uncle worked for owned a restaurant in town. He got tired of waiting for the family to pay a past due invoice he'd given them for painting their restaurant. So Uh my, yeah. So my great uncle took my grandfather and some other family members to eat there one night. They ordered lots of wine and lots of expensive food. When the bill came, my great uncle refused to pay it wrote a note on the check and told the server that the owner would understand and just left. (laughs) No fucking way. Man, the balls. The restaurant was absolutely used for money laundering. And I'm honestly surprised that my grandfather and great uncle lived to tell the tale. Apparently, they got all of their work as painters through word of mouth, no contracts or anything official. And they were on the good side of a lot of influential people in town, according to my mom. One of the local congressmen even gifted my grandfather a tiny handgun you might find on a lady's garter belt that had once been held as evidence from a crime for a time. (laughs) And was told, I know, and was told to not tell anyone that he'd been given it. I'm so glad that you chose that Tucson hometown a few months ago because I got the chance to learn all of these truly bananas things about my mom's side of the family. Stay sexy and maybe don't dine and dash when the mob owns the restaurant. For real. Lucille Petty. <laughs> Lucille. <laughs> <laughs> that is so ballsy. It's so ballsy. You are basically, you're just like, yeah, now you owe me money, the mafia. Right. And, but continue to hire me <laughs> to do work, by the way. Don't, don't stop doing that. Yeah. Well, I bet they liked it, though. Yeah. I bet you that that's one of those, like, you can see a, yeah. a Tony Soprano type being like, I huh. respect you for that. Yeah, that guy's got chutzpah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of giving the gift of a secret tiny gun. I mean, what's better than that? Of don't tell A don't tell anyone gift is like the best gift you could give someone. The subject line of this is my murderino mom's crazy hometown. Hello to my favorite humans and animals. You all rock. Let's skip the pleasantries and dig deep into this one. Amen. Okay. Take command of the email at the top is what I always say. That's the crucial. My mom has always been a huge fan of true crime content and made me the murderino I am now. As a kid, she would always tell me messed up stories. I always made her tell me over and over again. She would always tell me messed up stories. I always made her tell me. 
Okay. There's probably supposed to be a period in there somewhere, but I like the way I read it the first time. (laughs) Uh, Some of which I definitely had no business hearing at my age. I have a million stories, including a crazy one about how when my grandma was giving birth to my uncle in her home in Italy during the 60s, a man who had a hammer fall on his head from a scaffolding (laughs) ran into the nearest door, my grandmother's, with his head cracked open and blood everywhere, screaming. My uncle literally came out of the womb purple from the trauma. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> but that's a story for another time. No, it's not. I love I love a half teaser story. I love someone telling most of the story and then being like, never mind. <laughs> you know what? You're going to have to wait for the movie. <laughs> I want to tell you my favorite of all my mom's hometowns. This story has everything. So buckle in. <laughs> my mom grew up in Hoboken, New Jersey, known for its proximity to Manhattan and being the home of Carlo's Bakery, a.k.a. Cake Boss. Ah. Uh, from oh and then this here's the rest of the sentence Mm -hmm. for most of her formative years Mm -hmm. from the 70s through the 90s there was a history teacher at the local high school who was beloved by everyone who had him Mr. Saki in 1998 20 years after my mom graduated from said high school Mr. Saki was shot dead as he was heading to his car to leave for the day the gunman then walked a few blocks and shot himself this was when school had just let out so there were tons of student onlookers holy shit here's where it gets crazy the gunman was the husband of another uh, former teacher at Hoboken High School apparently the gunman became convinced that the two teachers were having an affair he kept sending threatening letters and phone calls to Mr. Saki the kicker is that it wasn't true the poor guy was shot dead over an affair that never existed I mean catalyst even if it had happened it's there's no excuse for that but that's just fucking extra tragic yeah exactly The catalyst for this conspiracy theory is that Mr. Saki and his wife sent the man's wife a Christmas card in 1994 because they work together. Oh, my God. Because who doesn't send family Christmas cards to mistresses, right? (laughs) After dozens of harassing calls, um, the family chose to hire a lawyer and not humor the deranged responses. It's believed that uh, he was then stalked for a lengthy period of time. This story is so unbelievably sad, and it's obvious the guy really needed uh, psychological help. This is why access to good mental health services is so important. Thank you both for all that you do. You've got me through this unbearable pandemic, and I still hope to see you at a live show one day. Stay sexy and don't get murdered, Jess. Wow, what a sad story. Yeah. Ghost sex at a Jewish camp. Mm. Actually, my last two stories are ghost stories. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, et al., This week, Georgia did her quilt episode about ghosts, and I thought you might enjoy this story. Like Georgia, I also grew up going to a Jewish summer camp, but in Wisconsin. Like many summer camps, this one had its very own ghost. Her name was, it's either Sussy or Susie. I'm going to go with Sussy. Her name was Sussy. The version of her death story that I know, I'm sure there are many, goes like this. The founders of the camp bought a big piece of property with an old white house called the Bayit, which literally just means house in Hebrew on it. (laughs) Think rickety stairs, a big porch, absolutely spooky as fuck. As the camp grew, the Bayit was converted into the camp library, a study room and bedrooms for the visiting rabbis. According to the legend, a young girl was staying at the Bayit, likely a a rabbi's daughter or something, and fell down the stairs, breaking her neck and dying. She haunts the camp to this day. My connection to the camp ghost... There was a work program for seniors in high school where you could be a junior staff member doing basic maintenance, like taking out the trash, weeding and cleaning the public spaces. What high school student doesn't love fucking a good a good weeding? Exactly. You didn't get paid, but it was a chance to go to camp for free with less rules. One oppressively hot night. The other girls and I convinced our unit head to let us sleep in the Bayit on the first floor because it had air conditioning. Oy. Wisconsin summers with no air conditioning in a cabin. Can you freaking imagine? <laughs> we dragged our sleeping bags to the main room, enjoying the candy we'd smuggled in and the AC. At one point, another girl stopped whatever camp gossip we were talking about, claiming she heard something. We all immediately shut the fuck up and heard a muffled girl's voice and thumping coming from the back of the bayit. We froze terrified. For murderino reasons, I decided that investigating the sound was a good idea. So two other girls and I got up and crept slowly towards the noise. You're either a get the fuck out of there or go towards towards the noise kind of girl. Yeah, I think I'm the latter. 
uh, which was coming from the small library next to the main room. The library was dark, so I pushed open the door and flicked on the light. Expected to see some paranormal activity or maybe even Sussy herself. Instead, we found two of the college age counselors having sex in the corner. Yes. (laughs) We screamed, slammed the door shut and immediately (laughs) ran back to the other girls to tell them what happened and celebrate this trophy worthy piece of camp gossip. Yes. We never saw Sussy, but I can't help but wonder how many sneaky camp quickies were interrupted by small girl ghosts or just random campers. Stay sexy and watch where you do it. (laughs) Steph from Chicago, Illinois. Illinois. P.S. Thank you so, so much for all the work you do to make this podcast happen. Mondays and Thursdays feel like the chance for me to catch up with my awesome older cousins each week. You really do mean so, so much to so many people. Hmm. Thanks, Steph. That's nice. I want to say it wasn't the by eat for us at my Jewish camp. It was the um, the swim house. What is that called? Like the swimming pool offices pool house pool house thank you yeah. i made out in the pool house with my hell yes yeah. yes i did <laughs> did it smell so good like chlorine oh, in love beautiful clean smell of chlorine <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of mold yeah uh, i wonder if there even was a ghost at all or if every time the younger kids thought they heard a ghost it was just the older counselors hooking up absolutely but i wonder if the I mean, older counselors hooking up ever actually got haunted because that seems likely. I mean, all of these are possibilities for the horror movie we're going to write about this by eat. <laughs> and it's meanwhile, a, Sussie's in the corner eating popcorn being like, yeah. Yeah, bring it. This The subject line is just explosion story. Great. Hello, hello. I heard some fun explosion stories on a Minnesota a couple weeks ago and figured I'd write in with mine. In May 2019, I was living with my parents in the North Chicago suburbs, having recently finished with my master's degree. One night I was watching TV with my mom when all of a sudden there was a massive bang, which shook the house. Having previously lived in apartments with dumpsters, it sounded and felt a lot like when the garbage trucks would just drop the dumpsters on the ground. But given that it was 10 p.m., it clearly wasn't that. After looking outside to make sure nothing crazy had happened, my mom and I promptly declared it to be title title case, not our business, and went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> N.O.B. Uh, it wasn't until the next morning when I would find out what happened. Ten miles away from my house, mm. there was a silicon manufacturing plant and Uh, And on the night of May 3rd, 2019, the plant exploded. And I mean exploded. The blast was not only felt strongly at my parents' house 10 miles away, it was reportedly felt as as far as 20 miles away from the plant itself. As it turns out, one of the products they were making that night had the potential to produce flammable gases. And that night, something went very wrong. The company, of course, denies any wrongdoing. However, they were fined $1.6 million by OSHA for a grand total of 12, quote, willful safety violations, unquote, Mm. including the minor detail of not having flammable gas detectors. Four people lost their lives in this incident, including one man who reportedly ran back into the building to make sure the rest of his team was able to escape. It seems like a miracle that anyone survived at all. For a long time, nothing remained of the building except for several large metal tanks. However, it's now finally being rebuilt. I currently live less than a mile from the facility, so I certainly hope it doesn't explode again. Stay sexy and always follow OSHA regulations. Ken's. Wow, that's so terrifying. I feel like... And huge. Yeah. I just feel like it, that doesn't happen as often. Like house, you know, we have hot water heaters, we have gas and all this, you know, it's just right there in these neighborhoods, yep. especially old houses. And the fact that it doesn't happen more often. It happened in my town of Irvine once. And I just as a kid Did it? and I we drove by the house and I just remember being terrified of it just one one house exploded one house exploded i think it was just a gas leak you know nothing nefarious but it's just like so scary so scary and just so hard to predict and fix i don't know yeah it's scary wow that's so Uh, sad and he ran in to save people what a hero he went there's like a real hero in that story which is pretty cool yeah i wish you knew that guy's name never Mind your own business. <laughs> Always go out and check out what it is. <laughs> Not our bit. I mean, I guess that the uh, the theory behind you hear something as like loud, like an explosion, but you can't see anything. Yeah, what are you and then you're do? like, 
well, yeah. Go I'm here's what drive you're gonna do. Towards go the drive sound. around. Yes. <laughs> yes. What are you busy? What do you have work early? It's the no. only reason to talk to neighbors is when something goes wrong. Put on a fun light jacket and go stand in the street and cross your arms. Gossip. That's what I do. Gossip. Look around, wait for someone else to come out. It turns out the oh. only reason I'll ever talk to neighbors is something bad happens. And now that cookie wants to meet every single person we walk by. She's just ruining my avoidance of people. Oh, yeah. If you have a puppy, your your avoidance of people goes right out the window. She goes ready. up to people and sits like when they're coming and is like, what's up? We're best friends. And then they freak out because it's a puppy sitting. Well, unless and they're then, assholes. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, good. Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't like dogs. Yeah, but yeah. she's so cute. I'm Kate Winkler Dawson, the host of Tenfold More Wicked on Exactly Right. And this is my new show, Tenfold More Wicked Presents Wicked Words. I've interviewed writers about their best true crime stories, like Brian Burrow, who tells me about going to high school with a serial killer. Dude, if you're lying about this, you're lying about everything. Well, it's manipulation. Yeah. Tenfold More Wicked Presents Wicked Words is now available on Exactly Right with new episodes every Monday. Follow Tenfold More on Twitter and Tenfold More Wicked on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe now and find Wicked Words on the Tenfold More Wicked feed on Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Okay, Home Alone, Haunted Piano. (laughs) Howdy there. Short, sweet, and slightly spooky story here. A few years ago, my husband and I had just recently bought a home together. He had left for the night to whoop it up with his brother in town about an hour north of our house. So I was alone in our new home for the first time. Allowing me the freedom to watch any soap operas I wanted and use the bathroom with the doors open. (laughs) Amen. God, live it up, girl. Just keep those doors open. Fart as loud as you want. Oh, my. Be yourself. I was enjoying my self-care night sitting at the top of the stairs talking to my brother-in-law on the phone when suddenly the piano started playing. Scared shitless, I hung up the phone. That's That's the wrong move, first of all. Yeah, yeah, you stay on that uh-huh. phone. Keep the line open. Uh, and and listened silently as the eerie but pleasant tune filled our home and echoed off the walls and through our mostly empty home. So like no furniture. That's even double terrifying. Uh, it, nightmare in town. Uh-huh. The music continued for almost a full minute. Then silence fell over the house, making it suddenly feel huge and full of dark corners. Mm. When I finally got the courage to walk downstairs, I checked our windows and they were shut. I checked our speakers. They were off. I did all in my power to promise myself that this music came from inside our home. It sure did. The kicker? We do not have a piano. No! What? <laughs> Steven, what? Steven screaming. <laughs> No, I, I thought she was the kicker was going to be it's a player piano. <laughs> it sure as shit ain't because they oh. don't even have a motherfucking piano. Oh, oh shit. Girl. Yeah. Well, I, you do now. <laughs> you do now. Get one in case that ever happens again. You can blame it. You, can't, truthfully, you have one. You can't see it. I truthfully oh. believe that someone joined me that night. Someone who in their former life loved to play the piano. They yep. accompanied me on my evening alone, brought me a housewarming present and have since never returned. Oh. My husband and brother-in-law still to this day give me a hard time about the haunted piano. That's why you stay on the phone. You say, Doug, or whatever. It's You hear yes. that piano. Guess what? We don't have a piano. Come over right now. Witness. That's Always right. keep the witness nearby. That's right. But I will forever stand by the music that filled the walls of our house this night as I sat alone at the top of our stairs. Thank you for reading. XOXOXO Sam. I want to say, as someone who isn't afraid of ghosts, allegedly... Um, to make it into a positive thing is the best thing you can do. Like talk to them if you're scared and be like, welcome to my home. You know, I, I feel like that's the way to not freak yourself out is to think it's a positive now, spirit or someone who loves you. As someone who does believe in ghosts <laughs> and has been hugged by one. Right. right. Bullshit. <laughs> Move out of that house. Get away. You're kidding yourself. Someone played the piano. Someone I mean, played a ghost piano. Ask Get that away. again when Vince is gone for the night. Because for real, for real, and and Cookie's barking at the corner. <sighs> I can't believe. Wait, what? 
what could that have been? What could that, like a neighbor turning the radio on for maybe a an iPod that you forgot you had dying in a drawer? Oh, maybe moving in, it, r- it rattled the to the drawer, and then an yep. iPod just ran. Do you have classical music on your iPod? Like you're old. You, remember the old are you iPod? a pianist? Is are it you? your? <laughs> Were you just having a memory? Is there toxic mold in your house? <laughs> That's probably. Were you high? Were you high Were you as a kite? Hallucinating music. Uh, uh, God, that's a, that was a real good twist. Yeah, around. that was real it. good. Okay. <laughs> the subject line of this one is, a Les Mis fan robbed my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even imagine what this is going to be like. Dear Karen, Georgia, Stephen, animals, and listeners. Huh. A few years ago, a guy I'd recently started dating invited me to go skiing with him. Boo. <laughs> this, is, this is a pretty normal thing in New England, though a bit aggressive for a third date. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. And when I when we got back home, I invited him into my apartment for some dinner. Nice. Hmm. He parked his car in the street, leaving two pairs of skis and all his ski gear in it. Boots, poles, etc. Nope. The next morning, no judgment, please. <laughs> he went out to his car and found the side window smashed and everything stolen. Oh. While he waited for the police to arrive, he noticed a plastic bag in the back seat. In it, he found all his tax documents and a four page letter from the thief. Yes, that's right. The thief went through everything he stole, realized the tax documents had no value to him, but a lot of value to my boyfriend and returned them. The letter apologized for ruining my boyfriend's day and explained what led him to breaking into the car. Oh, my God. (laughs) The thief also said that he hoped this would be a turning point for him, like the candlesticks were for Jean Valjean. (laughs) Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm a huge Les Miserables fan and went crazy when I saw this <laughs> reference. My boyfriend, who had never seen Les Mis, had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> anyway, the note went on into such so much detail um, that any detective with the slightest interest could uh-huh. have solved this crime. But alas, the police didn't have much sympathy for a guy who had skis stolen out of his car in a posh part of town. Naturally, I was certain my new boyfriend was going to break up with me after the robbery, but he stuck around. A few weeks later, when dropping me off at work, I said, have a great day. And he replied, stay sexy, don't get murdered. Oh, oh. needless to say, I realized pretty quickly that he was the one. Yay! Fast forward four years and we'll we'll still be happy as ever, despite our wedding being postponed oh. a year. Uh, ha- merch idea. Fuck you. I'm a covid bride. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's genius. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thanks for all you do. Susie. Susie. We caused a wedding, a marriage. Oh, we've well, been there for Susie. And let's just say Dave, because our guard is we- Susie and Dave and me and Georgia. All the way down the aisle. We caused a wedding. <laughs> it's like causing a car accident. I love the thief that's just like, I really hope this turns things around. I also love me. one that's like, here's why I'm in this position. And I hope you can understand. And like, you know, you're in a posh fire town. So hopefully like you have insurance and replacing this isn't a big deal for you. But for me, this I'm able to pay for my school books to go to theater school. But for me right now, yeah. the black market ski uh trade is so lucrative that I could not walk by. What if what if you were like, here's the thing. This is the name of the pawn shop I'm going to pawn them off to. You you can buy them back at a discount. Just give me a day or two. I'm going to make it really easy for you to buy back your rented skis because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good person. Ultimately, good Samaritan. Anyway, right back soon. Love, <laughs> Jerry. I mean, honestly, the tax document thing could have ruined his entire life. So yes. that is pretty men- mensch. It's a he's a mensch st- uh, thief, you know? Yep. Yeah. Like he's ruined. A, he's a, his, he could have sold those to someone who he's a robber with a heart of gold. He's like, I don't want what's worst for you in life. I just need what I need to get. By. I need a couple hundred bucks to buy my lame is DVD. <laughs> Because I refuse to pirate it. That's bad morals. What what if he was literally taking the cash that he made off of ski, rented ski boots and Uh skis and went and just straight over and bought front row tickets to Les Mis? (laughs) And he just can't stop. And changed his ways because of it. Yes. Oh, this has turned out to be a beautiful story. 
Oh, what a mini sode. <laughs> Hey, if oh. you love minisodes and want more, we're each doing one extra story every week for the fan cult. They're called mini minisodes. So make sure you check that out. We also have videos and low, we answer your low stakes advice on the, and there's like a ton of other videos and fun stuff on the fan cult. So go to myfavoritemurder.com to check that out. And if you're not interested in that, then why don't you go ahead and stay sexy? And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, do you want a cookie? <laughs>